Hello everyone, my name is Hillary, and I want to welcome you back to Discovery World at Home. Today, let's dive into the Ryman Aquarium to learn about some water quality and discover how it affects our scaly fish friends. Speaking of scales, let's start by learning about the pH scale. What is pH? pH is the potential of hydrogen activity found in materials. On a pH scale, we can measure just how acidic or basic something is. Ranging from 0 to 6, acids, like the type found in our stomachs, have very high levels of hydrogen activity. Ranging from 8 to 14, basic substances, like bleach, have very low levels of hydrogen activity. Right in the middle of the pH scale is 7, which is considered neutral. It's neither acidic nor basic. Pure, plain water has a pH of 7. Fish can be found in a range of freshwater to saltwater and from very cold to very warm temperatures in a variety of ecosystems all over the world. Most freshwater fish prefer water that is slightly acidic, and most saltwater fish prefer a pH that is slightly basic. Fish do best in water with a very stable pH. Not only do fish swim in water, they also absorb water via osmosis, and they absorb oxygen from the water through their gills. If a fish's water is too acidic or too basic, it can damage their health. How can we measure pH in the aquarium? At Discovery World, we use a water quality meter. Before we use it, we need to make sure that the probes are clean and the meter is working properly. We need to test our meter with three different pH solutions. They come in fun colors, too. The pink has a pH of 4, the yellow has a pH of 7, and the blue has a pH of 10. The particular meter we have is the YSI Pro 1020. It is a fully portable and waterproof meter that helps us measure not only pH, but also temperature, atmospheric pressure, and dissolved oxygen levels in the water. Let's use our water quality meter to check on our touch tanks. We also need our refractometer, a special tool we dip in the water to detect how salty it is. This is important to test because the level of salt and the temperature of the water can impact the amount of oxygen in the water too. We can then add the salt reading into our meter. Our saltwater stingray touch tank is usually at a level of 32 parts per thousand. That just means for every 1,000 cups of water, there are 32 cups of salts. These stingrays prefer water that has a pH between 7.9 to 8.3 and a temperature of about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Fish, including stingrays and sturgeon, do best in water with very high dissolved oxygen levels too. Next, we can dip our refractometer into the freshwater sturgeon touch tank and look through the eyepiece to get our salt reading. Even though this is a freshwater tank, we occasionally add sodium chloride, also known as table salt, in small amounts to some of our freshwater tanks to help the fish fight off disease or parasites. Today's salt reading is at one part per thousand. These hand-raised lake sturgeon that originated from River Edge Nature Center prefer water that has a pH between 7.0 and 8.0 and a temperature of about 63 degrees Fahrenheit. If necessary, we can artificially raise or lower the pH by adding chemicals. If our pH is too low, we can add this alkaline buffer to help raise the pH, making the water more basic. If our pH is too high, we can add an acid buffer to help lower the pH, making the water more acidic. pH is so important. With global climate change, coral reefs have been facing not only rising ocean temperatures, but also ocean acidification. Large amounts of air pollution and carbon dioxide is absorbed into the ocean every day. Higher levels of carbon dioxide lowers ocean pH, making the water more acidic. Coral reefs are made up of millions of tiny coral polyps. Each coral polyp is an individual animal that grow together as colonies, which form the backbone of the ocean. Coral reefs provide food and shelter to thousands of species of fish, like this little burrowing jawfish found in a coral tank at the Ryman Aquarium. When ocean temperatures rise and pH drops, this creates too much stress for the corals, which don't have the ability to relocate. 
This causes the corals to bleach and appear white as they release their colorful microscopic algae known as zooxanthellae. Zooxanthellae lives inside corals and helps provide them with essential nutrients. Without that algae, the corals can die, which then makes the reef less inhabitable by other aquatic life like this little jawfish. We can all do our part to help slow down ocean acidification by being stewards to the earth. We can make the choice to help reduce our carbon footprint by doing something simple, like turning off lights when we aren't using them. We can carpool, take the bus, ride bikes, or walk more to places instead of driving. We can buy fewer brand new things and support local thrift shops instead by reusing items that have already been produced. Small positive changes can help improve conditions for all aquatic life, like those found here at Discovery World. Thank you for joining us today and taking the time to learn more about pH. Come back soon. We can't wait to see you again.